What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Hustle with Jesse W. And today we got a nice Grand Slam day again. Check it out. What's going on guys let's go ahead and jump into this video here looking at tesla here looks like uh i might have missed uh, an opportunity here for a potential short uh via some puts right here i mean if i would have just grabbed some puts right here on this vwap fail right here honestly i would have picked up two or three covered uh, or sold one down here would have made a few bucks there easily at 300 bucks and then held the rest for a break even uh you know a break even stop we get back up here in this zone i just stop out of the last two contracts uh break even if not hold them and see if we're going to get you know a test down here that would be a monster of a trade monster of a trade uh but i am not going to jump into that i'm already sitting on a real nice day really really nice day and there's some important lessons that we need to discuss in today's recap and it's not so much the actual trading or technical analysis uh, in itself, but more of a psychological type of uh, lesson here. You know, we're going to have a, a psychological aspect here to today's lesson because, or today's recap, because it uh, is definitely really, really important because we know that once we learn to trade uh, psychological uh, or, or, or like the mental aspect of trading is the next thing we need to master. Once you, once you learn technical analysis enough so that you can trade and be consistent, you know, technically, uh, the next step is mastering your emotions. And that, to me, has always been the most difficult part. Uh, not in the sense of holding bags or stopping out. I have no problem stopping out of a stock when I'm wrong. Uh, it's just always, you know, been other things like fear of uh, entering a position, um, taking profits too early, um, greed a little bit, and uh, some FOMO. You know, I've never been the one to hold the bag. Uh, I've always known that cutting losses is absolutely essential. But those other things have troubled me in the past. And uh, we're going to go over, uh, you know, pride. We're going to go over some of that today here uh, as we go over the recap. Now, today we had a few stocks making some real nice moves. Okay, we had ANVS making a huge gap up, huge absolutely humongous gap up okay yesterday from four dollars to a high of day today of 1025 that is monstrous that's a monstrous gap up now it's looking like it's gonna go test the low oh, new low of day right there okay then we also had uh nvax with another monster gap up from 80 dollars that 80 dollar range all the way to a high day of 111 dollars and 77 cents and since then it's a fader uh, let's look at the SPY. What's that doing? Oh, here we go. So SPY had that red to green move and then pushed right back up to this 317. If you've noticed, this 317 zone is tough resistance for a SPY. It's almost like every time it gets up into that zone, you can get short uh, with a tight stop, of course. Now, what else did we have moving around? Uh, UAVS? No. Oh, yeah. There you go. UAVS? with uh, another gap up from 125 all the way up here. But like I said, fading small caps have been very, very duddish uh, after the bell. ANVS in pre-market was an absolute beast of a monster. Okay, I'll show you that one here real quick. And as I do, do me a quick favor, smash that like button for me, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Remember, once we get to 10,000 subscribers, we are going to uh, do a giveaway of a fully funded trading account now. Uh, and that's obviously just going to be for subs. So make sure you hit the sub button. Here you have an hourly chart. And for one hour, you had ANVS making this huge move from, you know, $7.93 here all the way up to just under $10. So there was moves to be had in pre-market on ANVS, but, you know, none for me. I don't, I don't really trade pre-market. Oh, look, see, see what I was telling you right there? Look at that. It still hasn't, but it hasn't given up. I think if it gives up, we're going to, you know, flush down here to at least 13.50. We'll see. Now, I do have multiple trades. I took two or three trades today and uh, I had two losers and one winner. My one winner absolutely dwarfs my losers and puts me well into the green on the day. Almost $1,000 again today. Super stoked and happy about that. Now, let me grab the life trade here the very first one okay so my first trade on tesla was here 
Okay, first we dumped all the way down here, okay, all the way down here to 1388. And I was actually looking at that zone to get long, okay, via some calls. And I didn't pull the trigger because I don't uh, typically try to, you know, like to trade right at the bell. But I didn't. I waited for a pullback. And when we got, when we started to get this pullback here, we started to hold this 1410 area, okay, where VWAP was at. And I thought to myself, okay, well, maybe we're going to hold this area and we'll have a shot here at a flag and push. So I got, I said, I'm going to just pick up one contract right in here. I'm going to pick up one. And if we consolidate and do well, I'll add to the position one more. And then, you know, we have, I'll have my downtrend line. And when we punch over the downtrend line, I'll add my third contract. Easy peasy plan. Not as easy as downloading Webull. Link in the description section below. You download the app, fund your account with a hundred bucks, get two free stocks valued between 12 to $1,400 and free trade or first trade down there as well. You download the app, open an account, no need to fund it. You get one free stock. That's three free stocks between two apps. Got to take advantage of that. But we got stopped out right here. Boom. It, it dumped a little bit underneath and I said, okay, well, this is not looking good. I'm out. Boom. And I exit done. Then I tried to get cute with it down here at the lower day, thinking the lower day is going to hold and we're going to get that bounce and try to fish the bottom out. That's something that I don't like to do and shouldn't do, but I tried it because Tesla is so nuts. And I thought the dip would just get sucked right back up. It didn't, got stopped out again, lost again. I was like, okay, that's it. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for my trade. And if my trade triggers, I'm going to take it. If it doesn't, it won't. My next plan was very simple. I was just going to look for a relief bounce. A relief bounce because we've had this monstrous drop, okay? Shorts are going to cover eventually. And new longs are going to jump in as the shorts begin to cover. And they're going to think this is going to go to the moon. I no longer thought it was going to go to the moon. You know, the moon being 1450 1500 bucks today, at least right now. I, I for one, didn't... Th I thought it was going to do that in here. I, for one, no longer thought that would be what was going to happen. So I wanted to see it push and make me make a, a red to green move or an attempt to the high. Uh, that's what I thought would happen. So I traded it in here and I made real good money and I'm going to show you that live trade right now. Oh, speaking of which, that short would have worked out really nicely. Really nicely. Look at that. Man, talk about missed opportunities. All right. So here we are. I'm in one contract. Okay, we have to bounce. This is in front of yesterday's highs which were at 1377 so that's that whole zone should be support you would figure shorts are going to want to cover in front of yesterday's high because it's a potential bounce area and sure enough we get the bounce so once we get that bounce i'm like okay perfect i'm going to jump in one contract and if we begin to hold and push i'm going to add a second contract I'm not looking to add a third just two contracts i'm already down on the day at this point i was down on the day about 500 and change Okay, a little bit higher than I normally want, but I'm on fire right now. I'm hot, so I'm pushing. That means I've increased my risk a little bit, not dramatically. I haven't doubled up on my risk. I haven't gone from, you know, a max of, let's say, $300, $350 bucks to a $750 or $1,000 risk. No, not doing that. I increased my risk a little bit, okay? And I'm being a little bit more aggressive because right now I'm hot. I'm in the zone. I'm trading in the zone, so I need to take advantage of that. Always being respectful of the fact that uh, everything can change really quickly and I need to know to pivot and go back you know, to my regular risk. Uh, the other thing is the mental lesson. We're going to go over it towards the end uh, on the psychological type of lesson, which is very, very important. You're going to want to stick around for that. So here we are, one contract. It's really, really slow bounce. So I'm not too comfortable right now. I'm not too comfortable, but... I'm going to say, you know what, we, this area needs to hold. And if it does, this area right here, the previous low. And if it does hold, we're going to probably get a quick little pop. Okay, this is a quick trade. We try to get the quick little pop right there. And as you can see, I'm already up 440 something dollars on those two contracts. Perfect. This is what I want to see. I want to see a push up over $1,400. $1,400 is a whole number psychological level, okay? So let's fast forward this just a tad. Right there, boom, we get the, a, a test of it and we come back down a little bit. I'm up almost 700 bucks, a little bit over 700 on those two contracts. I could have sold them right there if I'm trading my PL, but I'm not. I know I'm down 500 and something dollars on a day. So if I sell right there and close out, boom, I'm in the green, make a couple hundred bucks afterwards. It's after it's all said and done, but I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in trading my plan. 
I want to see that 1400 break. We got the 1400 test right there. We got the 1400 break right in here, right there. As soon as we get that $1,400 break, I put out an order to sell one contract. Look at that, I'm up over $1,000 already on this trade. Okay, I still have two contracts. Right here, I begin to put, get ready to put an order out to sell one. I put a limit order, $35, boom. That one gets filled pretty much instantly. You can see right here, I'm up almost $1,400. So that one's gone. Okay, now I have one contract left from $28.31. We're going off at 36 bucks. Now I'm looking for 1410 to break. I'm like, if 1410 breaks, this is going to be monster. This is going to be a monster win. My, my plan here is very simple 1410 break, 1400 support. If 1400 does not hold, I will stop out of this last contract. Next candle opens up and breaks underneath 1400. I don't like that. So I cancel, I close out the trade right there. Boom, closed out the trade. You know, it's kind of sad that it didn't work, work out. It would have been nice to have had it worked out, work out, you know, but hey, it is what it is. That was a real nice clean trade right there. What happens next, I believe, is that this? Oh, no, no, that's just a... Uh, Part of the reason why I exited here, I'll show you real quick. Part of the reason why I exited is because I'm keeping the eye, my eyes on the SPY. 1410 isn't breaking, 1400 didn't hold. SPY has gone red to green and Tesla still has not gone red to green. And the SPY was pushing, Tesla was pulling back. That's just relative weakness, I didn't like it. So, you know, boom, that's it. It's simple technical analysis. Then we had um, ANVS halted here. I was not gonna take the trade. I really should have, but I wasn't gonna take the trade. I just, you know, I had a plan in mind, but I didn't think it was gonna happen. I thought this thing was just gonna push. Uh, so I wasn't ready. My plan was, you know, pull back to VWAP, hold, and then a push. We get pulled back to VWAP right there, we hold, and we push, and we we'll go all the way up to new highs. Boom. Then it fails and halts to the downside. That was the action on ANVS. And let's see where ANVS is right now. Still nothing. I mean, it was a real nice move right here. It was about a dollar move, a little bit over a dollar, but uh, I didn't take the trade. I wish I would have actually. Let me show you my my gains here. My first loss was 354 bucks. My second loss, I actually took three, three, three trades. My first loss, 354. Then I was down 147. Then another $21 loss. Altogether was about 540, I wanna say. Uh, I'm not gonna do the math now. Then one trade, brings me right back to green $828 winner $634 winner those two contracts I took on that planned out trade you saw recorded there putting me up $940 on the day now I could easily say here and this is where the psychological thing comes into play I'm only away $60 away from a full thousand dollars I want to see the thousand dollar print on my on my on my screen I want to see a thousand dollars I don't care for this 940 I want to trade something make 60 bucks and then you start looking to scalp some garbage and you go from 940 down to 880. And then you're like, oh my God, now I wanna get back over 900. And then you're down to 500 bucks. And then, and then before you know it, you've thrown away all your gains because in your mind, you wanted that extra $60. That's ridiculous. Yesterday, I closed off the day with $1,692 in my pocket. I could have easily said, ah, let me just go take a quick little trade here, make eight bucks, 10 bucks, so I can get to the 1700. I wanna see that nice 1700 on my screen. Garbage. If I would have done that, who knows what could have happened. That's the type of stuff that it's all about pride and, and flash and, and all that garbage. And that's not me. I don't trade for that. I trade for consistency. And when I achieve consistency, you know, I push and push and push. And you guys have seen how, you know, how I trade basically. I could easily fall victim to that yesterday and today. But I'm not going to. I made $1,692 yesterday. Today, I was down 500 and something dollars and I'm finishing up the day up $940. Why am I going to worry about $8, 60 $68, 70 bucks, so that I can have these nice whole numbers? No, that's nonsense. Trade the plan and, and plan your trades, and that's all you got to do, right? After you learn, and then control the emotions. Let me know how you did. Drop it in the comment section below. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you're alerted when I drop my next video, and I'll catch you on the next one.